Okay, so this is the first video looking at the waves topic. So when I'm looking at the waves topic, I'm going to break it into three key areas. So for all of the waves, we're going to look at the things you can measure about a wave, which we call the properties of wave. And that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. Then I'm going to look at the different types of wave that we come across. So things like light waves, water waves, sound waves, those kind of things. And then finally, I'm going to look at the processes that can happen to waves. So things like refraction, refraction, and all of those other kind of processes that go with it. So we're going to start off looking at the properties and there are six that we are going to focus on. And these are the things you can measure about a wave. And we'll explain what each of these six things are to start with. So let's first define what a wave is and link it in terms of energy. So a wave simply is a mechanism of moving energy from one place to another, and it will move it from a region of high energy to a region of low energy. Um, so it might be something is very hot, in which case you get like infrared radiation moving energy. It might be that something just has a lot of potential energy and you just get a wave moving. There are lots of ways of doing it. But simply put, a wave is a mechanism to move energy. OK, so let's move on to some of the things we can measure about a wave. So the first thing we are interested in measuring because it tells us about the energy of the wave is the amplitude, which we give the symbol A. And this is an expression of the maximum displacement of a wave from the center line, which we often call the equilibrium position. And that's the one you can see running through the middle here. And we measure amplitude in meters because it's a distance from this equilibrium position. OK, so that's the amplitude. The next thing we measure out a wave is the distance between peaks of the wave. And or we can measure it between any two identical points on the wave. It should come out as the same distance, but this is the easiest one to show. So this tells us how long one wave is or one full wave cycle is measure, again measured in meters. It's a distance and you can see it shown on the diagram there. OK, so then there are a few other ones that we can measure as well um, that are more tricky to show on a diagram. So the first is frequency, which is the number of peaks that pass through a point each second, or it could be the number of troughs that pass through each point each second. It should be the same value. And that's named after a famous scientist called Hertz, um, but it has a base unit or a fundamental unit of seconds to the minus one or one over seconds. That's what a Hertz is. The next is a time period, which is the time taken between two peaks passing through a point. So essentially what that means is you're if you're trying to visualize this, you are sitting at a point and you just count the number of waves that go through that point in a second. That would be the frequency. If you measured the time between two peaks, that would be the time period. And we'll look at the relationship between those two a little bit later on. And the final thing we might be interested in in waves is the speed, which tells us the distance that energy is transferred each second by the wave. That's what we really mean by wave speed. We're measuring how fast the energy moves. OK, so these are our properties of a wave. Now, as you can see from the red lines, we're going to explore the relationship between these different properties. Um, so I already mentioned the properties that are linked together. Let's now explore what the specific relationship is. So these are all things that have been determined experimentally and you figure out these relationships. So the first one we're going to link is time period and frequency. Um, so what you find is that time period is inversely proportional to frequency and the the constant of proportionality is one in this particular relationship. So we get this equation, time period is equal to one over frequency or the reciprocal of frequency as it's sometimes called. So that's a nice simple relationship between those two. And what that means is if you measure time period, you now know what the frequency is, or if you measure frequency, you know what the time period is straight away, which is quite helpful. The next one is the relationship between amplitude and energy, which I mentioned earlier. So 
the energy transferred by a wave is directly proportional to the amplitude squared. So what that really means is if we double the amplitude, the energy transferred will be multiplied by four because it's proportional to the amplitude squared. So that's why I said it's a measure of the amount of energy being transferred. And the final equation is a way of linking frequency, wavelength and the speed at which energy is transferred, and we have what's called the wave equation. So speed is equal to frequency times by the wavelength. So that relates to the last three properties of wave. Okay, so those are the relationships. Let's put these to use. So I'm gonna ask you a series of questions, and what you're gonna do is use take some either measurements from the graph or use the equations that we I've just shown you to try and work out some different properties of the ways I'm showing you. So we've got a displacement versus time graph here and it tells us we've got a the energy is being transferred at a speed of 10 meters per second. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and see if you can work out each of these properties. So the first few you'll just be able to measure off the wave, the last couple you're gonna need to get the equations out to do some calculations with. So pause the video now and have a crack at these questions. Okay, so now you've had a chance to have a go and it's really important that you've had a crack at each of them. Let's take a look at what we should have. Okay, so the first two, as I said, are can be measured from the wave and there are a few different points you can measure them. So first amplitude we would measure from the center line and if we measure it to either the peak or to a trough we can see that we get as one meter. Um, because we've got a displacement versus time graph that means the distance between the same points on the wave would be the time period for this particular wave. So there are two particular points I think would make sense to measure it from. So both of them give you a time period of 0.4 seconds. So either of them would be fine. So those are the two straightforward ones to measure from your wave. Let's now look at the ones we're going to need to do some calculations for. So first off, we can calculate the frequency. Now we know the time period by just doing one divided by the time period. That gives us a frequency of 2.5 hertz, which you can see at the bottom left. And then to get the wavelength, we're going to need to use the wave equation. So the first thing we're going to do is make the wavelength the subject of the equation by dividing both sides by frequency. And then we've been given the speed is 10 meters per second. We've got the frequency is 2.5. So that gives us a wavelength of 4 meters. OK, so that's doing some basic calculations of properties of wave. Let's now have a look at comparing two different waves using the properties. So the first thing we want to do is compare the energy transferred by the red wave to the first wave. So what I want you to do is pause the video, have a look at maybe taking some measurements from these waves and see if you can come up with the relationship between the red wave and the blue wave. So for instance, maybe you think the red wave has double the energy or half the energy or the same energy transferred. So pause it and have a go and then we'll review it. Okay, so now you've had a chance to have a crack. The, the key thing here is the amplitude. So you can see the red wave has double the amplitude of the blue wave. So what a lot of people do would now would incorrectly select that and say that the energy transferred is double because they forget that the energy transferred is direct proportional to the amplitude squared. So what that means is if you double the amplitude, that means you're going to transfer for four times as much energy, which is why we would pick quadruple the amount of energy for this particular one here. OK, so same two waves. We're now going to compare them in terms of their time period. Uh, so again, pause the video, select your answer, then we'll review it as before. OK, so let's take a look. So from the diagram, we can measure the red wave has a time period of 0.2 seconds. The blue wave has a time period of 0.4 seconds. This is the same wave that we were looking at before. So therefore, the red wave has half the time period of the blue wave. OK, so let's now compare the frequency. So again, pause the video and have a crack at this. 
These are the same two waves, so you might be able to calculate it, but there are a few ways of doing it. See if you can figure out the relationship between the red wave and blue wave for frequency. All right. So if we have a look at the red wave, we can see that in one second, we've had five complete wave cycles. Therefore, it has a frequency of five hertz. The other way we could have done that is we know the time period of the one on the right is 0 0.2. 1 divided by 0 0.2 is 5 hertz as well. So there are two ways of doing that. Blue wave, we can see there have been 2.5 full cycles during one second. So that tells us 2.5 hertz. We also calculated its frequency earlier as 2.5, so we can see they're the same. So we can see the red has double the frequency, which, we sh which makes sense because it had half the time period. So that, that makes sense too. OK, so let's now compare the speed of the two waves. So you can see we've been, we've been given what their wavelength is, four meters and two meters. So I'd like you to have a crack at this. And I've given you the frequencies we've just calculated there. OK, so now you had a chance to pause and have a crack. Let's have a look at this one, too. So the red wave has a frequency of five hertz, a wavelength of two. So five times two gives you a speed of 10 meters per second. Blue wave had a frequency of 2.5, has a wavelength of 4, therefore its speed is also 10 meters per second. So the correct answer you should have got here is that they should have been the same as each other when we've calculated them. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is you're going to have a crack at filling in this diagram. So put away any notes or working out that you've done. And what I like to do is see if you can recreate this diagram of the properties and the relationships. And for each of the properties, include with it the symbol and the unit of the thing that you're interested in. So that's what you should have a crack at now. So pause the video, see how much of this you can fill in. And then you'll identify the things that you haven't yet picked up. OK, so now you've had a chance to fill it in. Let's see what you should have. So first off, the different properties here, the symbol is in brackets next to it. And then the unit it's measured in is below. And then the relationships that we, you should have had that we've looked at are these ones here. So this would be um, a complete summary of the factual knowledge you should have taken away from this video. So what is really important that you do now is that you don't just leave it here. So what is a really good idea is that you now leave some period of time and then have another go at filling in the blank diagram that I showed you. And it's really important that you have been to sleep between before you next try and review it because that is what we call space practice, which is very effective for learning a thing. So make sure you do come back and have a go, see how much you can remember next time. Um, but that's where I'm gonna finish off this video for today. So thank you for taking the time to watch. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.